So, for some of you new guys who may uh, be wondering, what the heck? Uh, yeah, I do this. This is what I do. It's like a job that I created for myself uh, to make money for my family. And uh, it works. Guys are buying stuff. What I do is I, uh, I source exotic lumber that I like, that I like the look of, run it through my planer, run it through my table saw, run it through my chop saw, and after all that, this is what I end up with, how many ever parts I can get out of a plank. So obviously I have to pick certain widths of plank and certain lengths of plank to get the best possible use out of my wood. This is how much leftover wood I had from this. So that's very nice. Now, the next step to me making these, since I do these in batches, guys, it's the only way I can do them effectively and, and quickly and efficiently and, and have a good result. Then I tape each one of these into pairs. I flip them. I match the grain in an attractive manner, as you can imagine. They're all matching grain because they're cut sequentially. They're stacked sequentially. So every one of these is a brother-sister kind of pair here. And you slap them together with some tape. And then I mark them. I have a bunch of different jigs, but this is the particular jig I use. It's hiding under there. I mark them using a jig. And I come over here to my my uh, drill. I drill them. And that's just to, to relieve a hole for my router. To get uh, So I don't have to take off much material with the router. You get a much better result with the router when you're taking about a sixteenth of an inch off. That's when you get a really nice cut anything deeper you can get tear out and it's just rough on the router so I put it on my jig again same jig that I marked it for drilling and I route it on my router table and I take the two halves apart I peel the tape off and I go over here to my bandsaw and I set up a fence and I cut apart and then I glue the two halves together after sanding them I always sand them before I glue them I true them up Make sure they'll mate really nice, wood to wood, because the glue isn't doing the job properly unless you got a good surface. So once I get them glued up, then I then I uh, drill them, and I put screws in them, I clamp down the the little part that clamps the blade without a blade, and I put them back in my jig, and I route them again. This time, it's ready for a razor blade. It's ready for a shell cutting test. If it passes the shell cutting test, I don't have to make any adjustments to it, uh, then it gets set aside and I do the next one. And I do that 15 times. And then once I have a whole big stack of, of units that have passed the initial shell cutting test, I profile them, you know, to make them comfortable to hold in your hand and attractive to look at and uh, in general just because it's like a signature touch I do to everything. I like to design and invent, and uh, of course I'm going to put my aesthetic touch on it, right? So, after I mark them with my profile, I come over here to the bandsaw, and I rough out the profile. Then I come over here to my sander, and I do what I can on this sander, and then I come over to this sander, and I do what I can on this sander, and then I come back to this router, and I route them. And then, I get my sander out, and then I sand them as best I can with a power sander, and then I hand sand them. And then I oil them. And then I test them again. And then I put them in a box and they're ready to sell. And that's what I go through. And uh, it'll take me all day, <clears throat> pretty much, to get these done. So that's, uh, what can I say? It's just how it's done. I thought I'd let you guys know. You thought you might be interested in the process without having to actually watch the whole process. Just hear it. But there are videos of me making shell preppers, and you can watch them if you want to. You can go to my Wax Slug Factory playlist on my channel, and you can watch. But, uh, yeah, getting ready to make this probably tomorrow. Depends on what else I got to do. And, uh, yeah, I got, got an itch to do more projects, but I got a lot of birthdays this month. I got birthdays for my kids. I got birthdays for my in-laws. And about the time that they're all done, I'll have a birthday for my wife. So, that's why uh, the monkey gun stuff had to happen now. Because it's sure as heck not going to happen later. <laughs> I won't have any money. <laughs> it was a great project, great fun. And it was funded entirely.
by my efforts right here on this bench, man. Everything that I did on this bench to that gun came from stuff I did on this bench to make money to do that gun, including buying that gun, everything, ammo for it. I really appreciate it, guys. Your support of Mountain Storm has made this enterprise possible. Without your support, there would be no Mountain Storm. There'd just be some guy in his shop with a piece of wood in his hand thinking, geez, this sure is cool. But thank you very much. I appreciate it. And y'all have a blessed day.